J stands for Jerry, which is my real name. Abbott is a total fabrication. My mom constantly reimagined our living spaces and major construction projects that she did on her own. She was a big influence on me. At the time, I wasn't sure if I wanted to study art or study design, and all the other students were talking about Cooper Union, which was a school I had never heard of. I applied and got in. I was dialing back on the notion of being a designer. There were incredible people to learn from in sculpture and painting and film. At the same time, there was so much interesting stuff going on in the area of design. It kept pulling me back. I started creating more esoteric design projects for small clients. They were really as much about being sustaining creatively and intellectually as they were about having a business. And eventually that side job became my full-time job. I first met Ellen in freshman year. It wasn't until many years later that we started doing a lot of projects together and ultimately got uh, married. <laughs> it was very collaborative, down to the point of actually sitting and writing together. I can remember many evenings of being at the same keyboard. The first iteration of my studio was called Design Writing Research, a design studio that was generative of its own projects and its own text, its own research. A lot of our early practice was really as much about writing as it was about design. There's a whole lot of authorship in design without ever picking up a pen. I was doing a lot of design on behalf of art galleries in New York, and that led to a lot of work with museums. We were pretty active in writing about the history of design. That became kind of a parallel mission, to be writing about design in a way that made it richer for other people. At a certain point in our lives, it felt like, I just don't want to raise my kids in New York. I want this other space. I started an office down in Baltimore, and I was maintaining one in New York. I can say I've never missed New York, and it's largely because I've been there every week since I moved away from New York. <laughs> when I'm there, I love it for what it is, and when I'm here, I love that I'm not there. The opportunity to join Pentagram came at a very peculiar moment for me. I had just decided to launch more fully into teaching at MICA. There was a lot of concern about, will I continue to have the kind of clients and projects that I have now? In the end, the Pentagram model really thrives on the idea of maintaining your singular identity within the group. I'm very willing to be esoteric, <laughs> very happy with being a little more on the margins. And it was a way of pushing myself towards the center a studio that united architecture, product design, and graphic design, as well as a model that said all partners share equally. A lot of the work that we do has been in the area of cultural institutions, art museums, things related to art and architecture, content-rich projects that had a publication component and an exhibition component. What is less typical is generic <laughs> corporate work. I think it's for a reason that I work with architects and art museums. There's a visual priority in these industries. As a designer, I just want to be doing things that are as interesting visually as they are conceptually. When I walk into a room, I just want to rearrange the furniture. And it's that same compulsion to figure out where stuff should go.